As the movie begins, we see a man named Bobby who is about to be freed from jail after serving time for murder. Before being released, the officer notifies him that he is on parole and that he must check in with them every week or face charges again. When she asks where he'll be staying, Bobby reveals that he will now live in his mother's apartment. He also admits that because his mother died while he was in jail, he will live there alone. Hearing this, the officer sympathizes with Bobby and gives him the contact information of a guy who can help him get a job. In the next scene, Bobby moves to the old apartment in East Village, New York, where his late mother used to live. The manager gives him the keys to room 519 and tells him they had to change the lock on the apartment because the day his mother died, the cops had to bust the door open. Bobby thanks the manager for the keys and then he heads to his apartment, but on the way to his room, he spots a little girl named Carly playing in front of room 517. Without much thought, Bobby enters the flat and notices his mother's picture, which makes him emotional. He then enters her bedroom and discovers blood on the pillow. Afterward, Bobby settles in and begins cleaning his apartment. Just then, he hears an abusive husband screaming at his wife in room 517. Bobby tries to get a sense of what's going on, but he's unable to hear what they are fighting about. Later, he discovers a hole in the wall and tries to touch it, but he ends up injuring his fingertips, and when Bobby goes to look for something to treat his wound, he discovers antidepressant medications in the cabinet, which his mother most probably used to take. Once again, he hears the couple arguing from the next room, but when he goes outside to investigate, he finds no one there, and the noise also suddenly stops. In the meantime, he notices another strange incident. Someone is peeking at him from across the street. However, Bobby ignores it, believing that they might just be some nosy neighbors. Later that evening, Bobby visits a restaurant where he meets his ex-girlfriend, Alyssa, who works there. Alyssa is surprised to see him, and they catch up on each other's lives. Following some conversation, Bobby invites her out for coffee sometime, but she rejects his advances stating that she is too busy with her job in fashion school and won't be able to hang out. Hearing this response, Bobby does not bother her anymore and returns to his place. Around midnight, he suddenly awakens and we notice a mysterious figure behind him. He then hears some strange noises nearby. When Bobby decides to follow the sound, his mother's ghost appears behind him and requests his help. But seconds later, he wakes up from his nightmare only to discover that it was all a dream. The next day, Bobby goes to meet a man named Hector, who is the owner of a car repair shop. Because of Bobby's history, Hector is initially hesitant to offer him the job. But after Bobby convinces him that he wants to be a changed man, Hector agrees to give him the job and warns him not to do anything reckless. Later, Bobby returns to his apartment and meets Walter, the aggressive man who lives in room 517. Walter continues to weirdly stare at Bobby and does not stop until Bobby gets inside and closes his apartment door. That night, Bobby hears some strange dragging noises again. Just then, a button on his piano begins to play itself and it begins to make a strange squeaking sound. Upon checking it, he finds that the piano keys are smeared with blood and that one key has been pressed. Then, he discovers a tissue paper near the piano with bloodied fingernails. The next morning, Bobby shows the bloody fingernails to the building manager. He suspects that someone else has the key to his flat, but the manager insists that it must be his mother's. He further claims that Bobby's mother had shut herself in the flat for several weeks till she starved to death and had gone insane. Bobby also tells him about the strange sounds coming from the walls, but the manager claims that they are just pipe rattling noises. Later at work, Bobby notices a woman crying in the corner. However, when he approaches her, she abruptly vanishes. After work, Bobby goes back to see Alyssa and asks for a second chance, but in response, Alyssa vents her anger at him for not writing her letters from jail, and Bobby claims that there was nothing good about the jail worth sharing. After that, Bobby invites Alyssa to his apartment, and this time, she accepts him. Now, Bobby returns home and discovers his neighbor, Joseph, standing on his doorstep, trying to eavesdrop on something. When he asks Joseph what's wrong, the man tells him that he's been hearing strange noises that are driving him insane. Joseph claims to have seen a woman banging on his door for help numerous times. Bobby neither confirms nor denies this, but Joseph says that he is aware that Bobby hears noises as well. Later, Bobby goes outside to put out some trash and when he returns, he hears some yelling from room 517. He can hear Walter violently beating his wife this time. When Walter notices that someone is outside, 
Bobby rushes to his apartment. He then looks outside and notices Walter furiously standing at his door. To get a clue of what is going on, Bobby searches through his mother's possession and discovers a tape recorder. When he plays it, Bobby hears his mother's final words, in which she states that she is not hallucinating and that she can hear the sounds. She is heard asking Bobby where he is and begging for his help. But shortly after that, she bursts out screaming as if she had been killed. Hearing this, Bobby becomes distraught and feels bad for leaving his mother in such a condition. The next morning, Alyssa arrives at Bobby's place and she notices the little girl, Carly, playing in front of his doorstep. Alyssa then calls out to Bobby, but no one responds. Realizing that the door is open, she enters inside and notices the nosy neighbor peeping in. Just then, a terrifying hand appears behind her and is ready to grab her. But Bobby arrives just in time. The two then spend some time together and have lunch. Later, while Bobby is in the shower, he receives a pounding on his door pleading for help. He goes outside to check and sees Walter's wife, Gina, standing in the front of the door. But just then, her husband arrives and instantly drags her in. Bobby approaches her door and inquires whether she is okay. He urges Gina to call him if she has any problems. After that, Bobby returns to his room, but Walter suddenly appears and tells him to mind his own business. The next day, Alyssa returns to see Bobby, but she notices Gina standing in front of his door, pleading for help. Seeing this, Alyssa assumes that the woman is Bobby's girlfriend and walks away. Later that evening, Bobby hears the woman banging on his door again, asking for help. As he glances out the door, he notices Walter taking her back to their flat. Bobby, tired of the daily turmoil, decides to take some action now. As he opens the door, he notices Carly standing in front of his door with a terrified look. When he asks what's wrong, she shows him the bruises on her arms. Bobby then invites the girl in and decides to call the authorities, but while he's on the phone, Carly bangs her head on the wall and then runs away from there. A while later, the cops arrive at the scene and Bobby informs them of the whole domestic abuse situation. He then leads them to flat number 517. When they unlock the door, it is entirely vacant. Nobody seems to have lived there for a very long time. Seeing this, the cops think that Bobby is some kind of weirdo and warn him not to call them again. Bobby then goes to see the manager and tells him about the family who lives in 517, but the manager also says that no one has lived there since he arrived. Meanwhile, Alyssa tells her friend about the woman she saw at Bobby's apartment. Her friend tells her to avoid Bobby, but Alyssa claims he went to jail because of her. She recalls going to a party where a guy followed her to the bathroom and began physically harassing her. Bobby came just in time and started mercilessly beating the guy until he died. Hearing this, her friend warns Alyssa that he is still a murderer and capable of doing anything, but Alyssa believes he would never harm her. Later, while working, Bobby discovers blood dripping on his face, but when he stands up, the blood completely disappears. He is deeply disturbed by this and goes to clean his face. Shortly after that, Hector approaches him and advises him to go home and rest for a bit. Meanwhile, as we see Joseph trying to prepare some food for his apartment, he becomes distracted and slices his finger, but it turns out to be just a hallucination. He then becomes terrified and tosses away all of the food. While throwing the trash, a girl almost grabs his hand, but Joseph runs away. When he returns to his room, he notices a loud banging on his door, and as he glances out the door, he finds bloody Gina pleading for his help. Terrified, he flees to the room, but the ghost of Carly arrives and a loud scream from Joseph is heard. The next morning, Bobby wakes up from a nightmare about the ghost. Frustrated, he then begins to slam the wall adjoining the room 517 and eventually damages it. Just then, a detective shows up at his door and asks where he was last night and inquires if he knows his neighbor, Joseph. Bobby doesn't understand what is happening, but he truthfully answers the question. Later, while walking through the hallway, he finds out that Joseph is dead. At work, Hector informs Bobby that a car has been missing from the garage. He then accuses Bobby of stealing claiming that the rest of the guys would never do something like this. And on top of that, Bobby has a sketchy pass. However, Bobby stands true to his ground and asks Hector to call the police to investigate. Meanwhile, Alyssa begins to see visions of the little girl at work. She becomes afraid and runs to the restroom, but the ghost follows her there as well. Later, Hector discovers that the police have towed his car and that Bobby is innocent. 
Therefore, he goes to Bobby's house to apologize for the misunderstanding. Bobby is not at home, so Hector proceeds to leave. On the lift, he notices Carly and asks her if she's okay, but the little girl suddenly stops the lift and starts running. Thinking that she might be in trouble, Hector tries to help her, but ends up coming across her dead body in the garbage. Suddenly, the dead girl wakes up and starts chasing Hector, due to which he falls down the staircase and dies on the spot. On the other hand, Bobby becomes so troubled as he sees Gina's ghost everywhere, even Alyssa notices Carly and hears voices wherever she goes. However, they both don't know what the ghost wants from them. Bobby then goes to speak with the nosy neighbors in search of answers. After some pressuring, the man reveals that years ago, Walter had beaten his wife to death when she tried to leave him and dumped his daughter's body down the garbage chute. But although Gina had banged on the other people's doors and screamed for help, no one was willing to intervene. Bobby realizes that the ghost has continued to haunt them because no one helped them when they were alive. Meanwhile, Alyssa arrives at Bobby's house, but notices Gina's ghost there. Gina then returns to her flat, silently after seeing her. Quickly, Alyssa knocks on the door and asks if she has seen Bobby, and moments later, she notices the ghost of Walter there. But before she knows it, he locks the door and starts beating her brutally. Fortunately, Bobby shows up and hears Alyssa screaming. He immediately takes her back to his place and assures her that she will be fine. As he calls the authorities, Bobby witnesses the incident that had occurred many years ago. Outside, Gina tries to leave Walter because of his abusive behavior, but he starts to get aggressive. She then calls for help in each room, but no one answers the door. And seizing this opportunity, Walter drags Gina into their room and begins hitting her viciously. As he is about to shoot his final blow, Bobby shows up and asks him to stop this brutality. Walter then looks at Bobby and tells him to mind his own business once again. As he is distracted, Gina takes Walter's stick and beats him to death. Following this, the three ghosts then disappear in the hallway, and with the ghosts gone, Bobby goes on to comfort Alyssa as the police head toward the apartment. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.